Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be coming back with you or coming back to you with um, a very interesting sequel tips and tricks that I just found out and got to know about. And as you can see, I'm quite excited because I didn't know about this and I'm like, if I probably know about it, it literally reduce the amount of creators I have to write when creating my data base, right? I'm actually using sequel practice for this purpose. So let's jump right in and as I show you how to go about this pretty much, right? So as you can see, I'm actually using sequelpractice.com and it's a very practical um, playground for you to literally um, query your database because there's already existing DOM database in there. And the very first thing you see is that it even lets you see the different database that is available. We have different SQL database that is available. You can view the schema. We have the patient database table. We have the admission tables. We have the doctor's tables. And we have the province tables as well to write. Now let's just have an idea of what our database contains. So we've seen select staff from patients. It just literally tells us what it contains in the patient table, right? So we have the patient ID, we have the first name, we have the last name, we have the gender, the birth dates, and the likes. So let's go and also see what's the admission table as well to just have a better sense of what's contained in our table. We have patient ID as well too. So it means that the patient ID in the admissions and patient ID in the patient table itself can be used, right? We also have the admission date, we have the discharge date, we have the diagnosis and we have the attending doctor ID. Let's see. So let's see in doctor's table. Quickly, quickly. In doctor's table, we have the doctor ID, first name, last name, specialty. Let's see so what's in the province name. In the province names, we just literally have the different province. Oh, interesting. It's actually province here in Canada. Smart, 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 smart. So let's jump right in and let's see. We have Alberta, which is Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario, Nova Scotia. Interesting. But the very first um, trick or tip right that i would love to tell you about is actually how to use using a sql right so i'm going to be querying the patient's database or the patient's table to start with and we see that the patient table has a unique identifier called patient id right that assigns the unique id to the patient and then we also check the admission table as well too. And the admission table, we also have the patient ID also that gives us an idea of when the patient was actually admitted to the hospital. So what this means is that I can literally join the patient and the admissions table together using the patient ID. And this really makes sense because it literally ties to the very first point, right? That is um, a particular SQL um, function that we can use, which is called using. So this is how using pretty much works, right? So I'm gonna do a select staff from um, the patient table itself. And then I'm gonna also do, do an inner join because we only want instance when there's, I mean, matching um, results from both tables, right? So inner join admissions. But first of all, let me alias this patient with P, right? And alias this as A, right? And definitely, I do not want star, so I pretty much want, okay, yeah, okay, let me just put in star here, and then this is how the using works, right? So what you do in here is typically what we know how to do is, right, we do inner join admissions as A, and we then do on p dot patient ID equals to A dot patient ID. I mean, please let's alias this with small capital letter A and this with small p and this with a small a rather and where we run this it works it gives us everything we want but a smarter way and a more effective way or efficient way to do this is like by literally using using right for this i mean i know using using right so we're going to do um as a and we're going to do this right so instead of on we're going to do using as a function right and good thing is that it's highlighted using um, the patient ID. So the key identifies what we're going to use in there, patient ID bracket here. And we don't want star, we just want setting, we don't want all the records. Let's just fetch some records, not all of them. So we want um, patient ID. I want to see the patient ID from put instance. So patient ID. And then. I also want the first name of the patient. First name of the patient. We also want the last name of the patient as well too. We also want the, yeah, I also want to even see the admission date of the patient, right? 
when was this patient admitted and when was this patient also discharged right I think that's pretty much all I want. And probably, do I want some gender? Let's just add the gender just in case for the patient. So, P, gender as well, too. Let me just take, take this out. This is just, it's just a comment, pretty much, right? And yeah, let's run this. Let's see. So, voila, it actually gives us um, every instance when we have the patient ID. And you notice I'm in an inner join right for this so giving us every time we have a patient id and it's literally also giving us um patient id the first name the last name the gender this is just a dummy sequel i'm literally writing in here so you can just change it based on your preference but i'm just using an inner just to show you how using works and what i like using pretty much is the fact that if you're using using right it's first of all as you can see it's reduced the number of query you are literally having to write so instead of doing join admission inner join admission as this on a on p dot patient id equals to a dot patient id you can just use using in bracket patient id and you're fetching it right so one thing you'll see is that literally like simplifies the syntax and makes the query more much more concise and readable i mean it makes sense because i mean it only would work for you if the unique identifier is the same name in both tables right i mean if for example it's not the same name you can't really use it right so it only works very much when the unique identifier is the same name for example i see in the patient table it's patient id and also in the admission table it's also admission id as well too and it's also important to note that um when you're also using this in particular when you're using using the join condition is based on a single column right with the same name, like i earlier mentioned and if the join condition requires multiple columns or columns with different names you should use like an on clause statement instead pretty much right so this is how it works and i really hope that you find that useful now that's the first tip let's jump right to the second tip right and now the second tip but sort of minute right is having to learn how to indent your columns you're selecting one thing i noticed that having to use comma right just at the very beginning of the line literally helps you debug effectively well than having to put it at this part of your of your query because that way it could be a bit tricky for you right i mean if i have it put a comma here i mean if it's comma here i put a comma here we don't need a comma here because there's no corresponding column we're adding to the next line but it's just better it makes sense for you to always have your comma indented or being the first thing that you see in your next line because that way it's actually cleaner for your code or your query and also helps you debug and and probably see areas where you could have like an error that may occur so this is literally a clean and effective way having your comma by the left hand part of your query or your column name rather than the right hand side of your column name pretty much i hope this helps you that's the second tip a trick so now moving on to the third point we're going to look at how to actually use Sibuta in your SQL query right and we're just going to try this on the patient table itself and let's just also go on and see what's in the patient table um and i'll explain to you how filter works right so i know that we have like a couple record in this table itself however it says there are about 450 results here right but i'm only seeing the first 100 rows in here but how about if I want to see like an aggregation of these um, tables based on specific criteria with um, or specific conditions pretty much, right? And this is where filter comes, right? I can usually use filter to see the counts as well as also see the count based on certain criteria. And I'm going to show you how that works. So first off, I want to see the counts as I earlier stated. And I always love my columns, whatever columns I'm trying to create or work with like on a new line. So I'm going to do a select yes from the patient table and I'm going to do a count and as we all know that the count is pretty much going to be 4030 because we can see that in here already so we already know what to expect for this so I'm going to do count this as all counts probably not the best column name to name it but I'm going to work with that and then this is where the other um this is where filter would come in right I'm going to filter the count based on a certain criteria I know that there's something called birth date so what about if i want to see all the bed dates with records after 2000 right so that's something you could probably see so i'm going to count this count star and then filter this is where filter comes right let me make this filter a capital letter because function and then where 
the bed date itself right so we already have a bed date here is greater than 2000 first january 2000 and let me call it specific counts probably not the best name to use but please guys you get you see i'm getting to it so i'm going to make it smaller later um specific on accounts yeah so let's see so i should be expecting for 50 for four five thirty results for the first record but let's filter this and let's see if it's for bed date after 2000 let's welcome down oh yeah so wait so yeah we're seeing 4530 and with the date greater than 2000 we're seeing 1121 so this is actually how filter works and why i really like this um function essentially is because it, it works very well on aggregation so think about your count your sum and the likes filter is very good for aggregating and we in here we actually use count for aggregation and also filtered for bed date as well too and one thing also is that i mean you're not having to use sub queries for this particular purpose right you're literally just using it in the same query itself and you're also not using a case by statement as well too so what this means is that it helps you literally effectively write your query well and do your aggression without the need of subquery or case based statements right and also if you think about it in terms of readability it's very understandable when you look at it it's easy to read and very good to the eyes as well too you're able to understand how it works as well too and also sort of also have like a better performance i mean if you think about it right Charlie when dealing with large data sets right this shows us how to literally just get the count you can't even when like a particular column is no how do you know right how do I my record is null as well too so these are also ways you can actually figure out um setting unique instance that may occur in your database based on filtering certain columns just to fetch that count for you that's literally the drill in terms of like what i've learned in recent times right and these are functions that will literally come in handy for you pretty much and also speed up your query time as well too i really hope you actually enjoyed this video personally i actually love creating videos like this so this is something you love seeing more of let me know this is really a very simple to use and you can start using it as a beginner or even someone who is probably advanced in the data analytics space or data science space right so till next time ensure to like share and you know subscribe as well too and also comment let me know if you've used this function before am i the first person to just find out about this unique um, function that actually works and if not let me know how you're using it in your learning as well too until next time have a great day guys bye